right. So hi guys, welcome to the Karen Ching Show. We have a special guest today. He is actually one of my connections on LinkedIn. Let's welcome Gareth Bowen. Am I right? <laughs> Bowen? Yep. Yeah, hi, right. <laughs> hi Gareth. Welcome to the show. It's so nice to meet you. Hi, Karen. Anjie. <laughs> okay, so Gareth is a qualified accountant with five years of industry experience who now runs his own, right? Your own. Um, yeah. Yep, <laughs> company. So Gareth Lawrence LTD. So Gareth, um, can you tell us more about you and also your business? What do you do? Okay, so uh, I basically didn't do any further education. So I left school at 16 after my GCSEs. Mm. Uh, and I started up uh, as I got an apprenticeship, basically, in an accountancy practice. Uh, mm -hmm. I had three and a half years experience at various accountancy practices, uh, a small one and then a much larger one as well. And then uh, last year I decided to go out on my own and start my own bookkeeping and accountancy Ooh. practice. Nice. That's awesome. How old are you by the way? Cause you're so young. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 21. <laughs> wow. You're 21 and you're already an accountant. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. So today we're going to talk about uh, smart ways to manage uh, your finances or our finances. So um, can you tell us the basics of uh, financial planning or why is it important? A personal finance is very important. So yeah, can you tell us more about it? Okay. So I think, I think we all understand that personal finance is quite important. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good to have your affairs in order. I don't think anyone really disputes that. Now I find that the, the best way to do it is by going the path of least resistance so mm. when i'm feeling good and i'm feeling uh good about my finances i set up systems then that help mm. me that are so easy to follow that when i can't be bothered that i still follow them mm. okay so it's um it's important to make it easy for yourself and um and that way you can sort of keep up with with what you've been what you set yourself to do Mm. All right. So, um, why do you think budgeting is important, uh, especially in personal finance? Mm. Okay. Mm. So, I don't like budgeting. Uh, oh. My, <laughs> <laughs> my, my experience of budgeting mm. is I spend an entire day uh, going through. Uh, my bank statements and then I create a spreadsheet and I go, okay, well, I can spend this amount on food. I can spend this amount on my phone, et cetera, et cetera. And then I feel mm. really bad about how much money I've been spending and I never look at it again, basically. So mm. what I do, what I do <laughs> is um, I, uh, I basically have different bank accounts. So, mm. I, uh, I have one account where all my money goes into. I then transfer money straight out into various savings accounts uh, for mm -hmm. different things. You know, if I'm saving up for a new car, I put some in there and I put some to a holiday, for example. Mm. Um, I then work out my, my monthly direct debits. That's quite quickly to do. So my, the, the monthly cost that I have to spend every month just because, you know, the cost of life. Mm. Um, I then add in some costs for groceries and that's all I keep in that main account. Mm. Now I transfer the, the rest of the money into a separate current account basically. Mm. And that is my guilt-free spending money. So I oh. can go and buy meals, I can uh, go and buy clothes, I can mm. do, do the fun stuff and, and pay for experiences. And that's, you know, it sort of changes your mindset. It uses psychology mm. for your own age. Um, mm. And so instead of your experience of budgeting being um, that you are constrained in what you spend, mm. you then have a choice. So you get towards the end of the month, you've got £40 left in your guilt-free spending. Mm. Do you go and rent a mountain bike and go mountain biking for the weekend with your mates? Mm. Or do you go shopping instead of 
um, you've gone shopping and now you want to go mountain biking and you look at the budget and you go, oh no, I can't do that. Mm. Because you didn't realize you were in that situation beforehand. Whereas if you've got the money in a separate pot, you can oh. see it going down and you make decisions, you make choices on it. So it gives you the power to spend it how you like instead of just constraining oh. you. Do you, do you see, so do you see so the nice. slight mind, mind shift mm. change in that? Yeah, yeah. No, I've learned, I've learned it. <laughs> but so nice, <laughs> it is so nice. So it's just, uh, basically, it's just a two savings account. Yeah, just, so I've got uh, yeah. two, two current accounts. Two and current then, accounts. And then, accounts. Mm. so basically that's the, uh, the other account is just like for your wants <laughs> and the other account is just for your needs or something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's, basically. That is a very good, <laughs> very good tip. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah, any tips? I, uh, we want more tips to help uh, budgeting better. Yeah. Mm, okay. Mm. All right. So uh, tip number one, I know from my experience of trying to mm. budget in the past, when I go, right, I'm going to save towards this goal. I mm. then go, right, I'm going to save 250 pounds a month starting now having mm. never saved anything before and then so you put 250 pounds into your bank account after you've just been paid uh 250 pounds into your savings account mm. uh and then you get to the end of the month but you've you've not changed the, your mindset you've still been spending like you have before mm. and now all of a sudden you've got no money halfway through the month so you transfer 150 pounds yeah. back out and yeah you know, you're, you're back to almost square one. Now it encourages dipping into the savings account, which is a, is a bar that you should never cross. You should only dip into your savings accounts for mm. the reasons that you set them up for. That mm. is, that is one thing that I'm quite strict on myself. So it's always important not to overcommit. So you don't force yourself into that. Mm. So month one for, for my fellow Brits, you want to do mm. about 50 pounds a month, for example, I find that's it. That was a good amount for me. Mm. Uh, and then month two, maybe 60, 65, maybe 75 pounds, just put it up incremental incrementally. And then, mm. so your, um, it's not an instant massive shift. It's a gentle change of your mindset over time. Mm. Okay. Tip number two, use your bank account roundup feature. Now I know not all bank accounts have this, but my, my bank account, I'm for, for people in the UK, do you, where do, where do people mostly watch this sort of, who's your audience mostly? Mm, uh, Philippines. For, ah, okay. Mm. So mm. I don't know if you have these sort of bank accounts there, but my bank account has, um, a function where if you spend one pound 50, it will round up the nearest, the, the rest of the 50p to two pounds. So it will take two pounds out of your current account and mm. it will transfer the rest of the 50p into your savings. So mm. it's a way of saving when you don't even know you're saving. Oh, that's so nice. So you save, you save 50p here, you save 90p there. And mm. then before you know it, you've got 40 pounds in there. And then before you know it, you've got a couple of hundred pounds and it's, you go, oh, I didn't even save it that wasn't even a conscious conscious mm. effort because That's it's nice. so small and incremental mm. it just adds up and you don't even notice it so for mm. that i think i've got 250 pounds in there at the moment from me wow that's so, nice and that's, you know just i when i spend i save mm. yeah <laughs> same okay all right okay so um I've got one more piece of mm. advice here and that is to look at your bank accounts on a, on a daily or, or much more regular basis than you probably already do. Mm. So I know basically I, I go through phases of doing this. So if, if my income's taken a bit of a hit, mm. I will look at my bank account every day. And that is, most people, when, if their income takes a bit of a hit, you don't want to look at your bank account because you, you don't really have mm. a lot of money you sort of want to blank oh. yourself off mm. um, and, and bury your head in the sand. But I make a, I make a thing out of it. And I could, basically, when I wake up in the morning, I look at my bank account and go, 
that's all the money I have, mm. or this is all the debt that I have. I need to sort it out. And it gives me a bit of motivation for the day. Mm. You also okay. know exactly where you are. If you're checking in on your guilt-free spending money, it's a good way to just sort of check where you are. You're not just spending without, without knowing where you are. Mm. Okay. That's very good um, to hear. Mm -hmm. mm. All right. I've got, I've got a final one. Mm. Okay. Last tip is uh, to set up. Uh, so for example, you get paid in the Philippines. Do you get paid like on the same date every month? Generally, if you're employed, or how, how does that? How do you? Mm, get yeah, there are monthly. There are also fifteenth and thirtieth. Mm, okay. Mm. So, what I would do, what, what I do in the UK mm. is, um, if I pay myself monthly from my company, so mm. I, I transfer money from my business account to my personal account on the last day of the month. Mm. Now. I also set up an automatic transfer um, mm. for the very next day to, for the money to go to my savings accounts. So I literally, so it's going back to sort of what I was saying at the beginning, where you, you make these rules and controls when you're oh. feeling good about yourself and then mm. you don't need to do anything when, when you're feeling bad mm. and not motivated and you can't be bothered, but it just yeah. does it automatically. So you're less inclined to not save i more inclined to save mm. <laughs> really so it's, it's really um boils down to having a self-control <laughs> mm. especially when spending money okay well, it's, well, it's, about, it's about using it is is not about self-control i think it's it's about um using acknowledging the lack of self-control that you have mm. and moving it out of your hands is to do it when you're feeling so you don't want to do stuff, uh, set stuff up that you have to have to do every month. Mm. Um, even when you're not feeling bad, it just does it automatically. So, mm. but even when you don't have that self-control, it does it anyway. Mm. Okay. All right. So, um, why do you think having an emergency fund is a must have? Mm. This, this is another one. Okay. So mm. I, I don't have an emergency fund and I sort of, it was always one of those things, you know, I can see the advantage of having one, but mm. I've never really had it high enough in my to-do list and, and my mm. expectations to really work towards having one. Now, mm. I, I keep a bit of a, an emergency fund in my business. Um, mm. So in my business bank account, and even that wasn't really a conscious effort. So, mm. um, it just sort of happened, um, and which is great. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. So, so mm. but, the, but the reason why I have it in my business and I haven't taken it out and put it into my personal accounts is because when I transfer money out of my business, I pay tax. Mm. So oh, I don't okay. pay tax to take it out of the business to have it sit in a personal account. Mm. Now, because because I may not need it, so I'm paying money. I'm paying tax. On money that I may not even need. So if I keep it in the business, mm. I've not paid tax, personal tax on it just yet. Mm. Um, so and I don't know the exact tax rules in the Philippines, but um, I think that it's probably about the same that you have mm -hmm. tax, and then when you take money out, you, you pay personal tax. Mm. So, so I, I keep the emergency fund in the business. Business, okay. Now, saying that about the emergency fund mm. the coronavirus has, has changed my viewpoint on that a little bit mm. so i was speaking to someone last night mm. and uh, he's a he's a jeweler okay mm. now okay. one of his suppliers is a is a british business and it had been you know it's all about handmade high quality mm. low low volume so they don't sell much but what they do is mm. the best of what it is and mm. this company has been around for a hundred years you know it is mm. a solid great british company mm. now coronavirus has it, it for, first of all it stopped it stopped um jewelers oh. trading altogether mm. now now things have reopened in the uk a little bit and people are going back to jewelers so jewelers are now taking money mm. but they are no longer buying the stock. So, so jewelers mm. are 
are getting some money in, but they're storing it for the harder times coming. Oh, okay. So the suppliers are now not having any business. So they expected to be getting business in when the shops reopened, but they're not getting it. Now this mm. company that had been around for a hundred years, the government has been, has been paying his staff's wages. Now oh. that finishes next month and they don't have any orders for Christmas. Like normally they would have oh. um, tens or hundreds of thousands of pounds of orders. Mm. They don't have any. So he doesn't have the work for his staff to do. Oh. And Sorry. even if he did have the work, he can't afford them. He can't afford to get them in and mm. he can't get a bank loan anymore. So he, because he can't get the staff in, he's going to have to make them redundant, which means that he's got to pay each and every one of them a, lunch, a lump sum. Mm. And his business will go bankrupt. Oh. Now, that really hit home how bad mm. the coronavirus can be for some businesses. And that is a, that is a solid company. It had been around for 100 years. You yeah, know, that is... That's yeah, these old, things old don't company. happen yeah. overnight, oh. except it has happened overnight. Mm. <laughs> and if if they'd have had a, a bigger emergency fund, maybe they'd have a better chance of survival. Mm. Not their fault. You know, you can, you know, coronavirus. Well, no one predicted it. You know, it yeah. just it's happened. And happened. Yeah. You know, mm. if if a, if these companies had a had a bigger emergency fund or people had a bigger mm -hmm. emergency fund, then it might be a slightly different story. So, yeah, mm. it's, it's 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 quite it's quite sad, really. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I'm I'm definitely reconsidering my viewpoint on how. <laughs> yeah, especially nowadays that there are a lot of jobless people mm. Mm. and they have no what? fund <laughs> yeah <laughs> over there, there, there are a lot of people going uh, unemployed yes also here it's really really so hard even a lot of establishments have been closed even it's very uh successful but then mm, all got bankrupt so it's really yeah. so sad yeah tricky okay. times hmm yeah Okay, so um, why do you think reducing expenses is important also? Mm, okay, good mm. question. Um, I personally find earning more money is much more fun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that said, it's, it's a lot harder to earn a pound than it is to spend a pound. Mm, so true. Um, I find the easiest way to to reduce expenses is um, to reduce my my direct debits. So mm. I just realized I'm not really answering the question. I'm answering how to save money, mm. why reducing expenses. So, so let's go back. Mm. Um, <laughs> uh, why reducing expenses is, is important. Mm. Now, I, f I think we all sort of understand that we've got to spend less than, than we earn. That's a sort of, basic mm. fact of personal finance but it's one that we forget mm. um you know, sometimes we get credit cards and we get a bit carried away yeah um, guilty <laughs> uh, <laughs> me too <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> um, but at the end of the day we've we've got to you know sustain the way that we live our life particularly in times like this mm. and the only way to do that is to spend less than we earn so mm. That's that's basically why why reducing your expenses. Yeah, expenses. And then, <laughs> it's and, then, yeah. and then you can save for holidays and stuff and, mm. and do the best stuff in life and, and not stress. Yeah. And the big, biggest underestimated thing is having the, the stress removed. You know, okay, mm. it's not fun to, you know, not buy those new clothes, mm. but the stress of actually paying it off in the long run, you know, yeah. once you've done, you know, a few shopping trips and you're like, okay, I've spent a thousand pounds now. Uh, and, yeah. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. quite stressful in the long run. Mm. But, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So any practical ways to save money? Um, so 
the the easiest way that I find to reduce expenses is reducing my sort of fixed monthly uh, direct debits. So mm. um, I every six months to a year or so, I, I sit down and I go through my bank statements for the last couple of months. And then I, you know, it's amazing the, the amount of things that you pay for that you don't really realize, you know, when mm. you really sit down and go through it, you know, it's, um, you just every now and then you've got to have a purge and go through it. And that's, I find that's a nice quick win. Mm. Um, the other things are the, the big things that you spend money on. So housing, if you're, if you're renting, mm. you know, maybe it's worth going for that. It depends how much you, you value stuff really. So mm. if you value having a nice house, then, you know, go, for, go for that nicer house. But if you don't care too much, if you're, um, if you're only, getting the nice house because um sarah next door has got a nice house or oh or yeah <laughs> keeping mm. up with the Joneses is a really bad reason to mm. um to get that bigger house that you can't really afford that's mm. that's the biggest way to get yourself into financial difficulty mm. now now the other things quick wins uh negotiating on your car insurance and mm. negotiating on your mobile phone contract. Certainly mm. in the UK, I don't know sort of how those how those work out there. Mm. But certain, certainly over here, the big things that I really do is I renegotiate my car insurance every year because mm. otherwise they renew it and they put it up and up. And if you don't if you don't kick up a fuss, then they'll just shaft you for it in the long run. Mm. Okay, all right. So why knowing and setting up your financial goals is also very important. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I think we all know the benefits of having goals. It's mm. something to work towards. Um, and you know, if you don't have anything to work towards, then why are you doing it? So mm. the, the biggest thing is actually having a goal when you sort of having something to treat yourself, reward yourself when you get there. So, mm. um, if you have a financial goal to, uh, earn 1,500 pounds a month. Okay. Mm. So when you get there, what are you going to do? Are you going to treat yourself to uh, a holiday, have a week off and go on holiday? Mm. Um, not at the moment. Um, or are you going to buy yourself those shoes you've been looking at or mm. buy yourself a laptop, a new phone, or just, um, have something a bit less financially, stressful um financially uh a bit cheaper mm. um so if if you're if you're not really too fussed about if earning 1500 is just enough to sort of start the mm. debt um then you want to treat yourself you go and do every day maybe you want to go on a weekend camping you know mm. something like that, but have a reward however oh. the what you've got to remember is if you only live for the goal, you're going to be mm. very disappointed when you get there. Mm. So as soon as you get to the goal, you're like, yes, I got to the goal. And then, so it's like five seconds of happiness. And then you're like, right, what's the next thing? So oh. the thing you've got to remember is to actually enjoy the process, you know? Mm. So going back to the, the goal of earning 1,500 pounds a month, mm. um, you want to, sort of enjoy the process so you want to break it down get a new client mm. um and then you want to really um sort of be present in that and actually feel the happiness rather than just moving on to the next thing you want to celebrate the little wins stuff mm. like that mm. okay nice okay so um any smart ways to manage your financial uh, finances especially this time of the pandemic yeah Okay, so smart mm. ways to manage finances. In I've got nothing like revelationary here. However, mm. the biggest advice that I would give to anyone listening to this is just be a bit more frugal because you never know what's happening and mm. you never know what's around the corner. And although um, certainly the politicians here are trying to encourage people to go out and spend mm. money and get the economy going again, mm. you've got to while that's got its advantages and I feel a little 
bit bad not taking part in that mm. i would much rather look after my own personal economy mm. so yeah. my, my own personal economy is making sure i get money in every month mm. making sure i pay my debts um you know that's that's my personal economy and mm. you know if you put a tiny drop in you know so our government is doing it did like an eat out to help out scheme so it was trying to encourage people to go out to restaurants and and buy food out now i didn't really take part in that because even though going out and, and eating at those restaurants would help mm. wider that's not going to help my personal economy you know i've sure. i've got sort of my my business has taken a hit because of the coronavirus and i've got to be a bit more frugal and a bit more clever about how i how i go about things Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So definitely, we must be frugal and clever about things. Okay. Got it. Got it. <laughs> All right. I'll take those tips. <laughs> okay. So can you tell us more about um saving, especially for long term mm. investment? Yeah. Okay. okay. So I don't know how it works over there, but over here, um, everyone's encouraged to buy into a pension scheme. Now, mm. I see that the pension schemes have their place uh, however i don't really like them because they have unknown fees they have rubbish returns and mm -hmm. i don't have any control over my money so my advice to people saving for long term you know mm. for example um a young a young professional about my age or a bit mm. older anyone sort of under the age of 40 really mm. um is you're going to be saving for the next 20 years at least. Mm. Um, the, the FTSE, so Warren Buffett, the world's best investor, mm. he, um, the world's best, the world's most successful investor. Mm. So his, his advice is that you should invest in the S and P 500. So, uh, mm -hmm. Basically, the reason why is that even though it goes up and down in the market cycles, mm. if you look at it over time, compare it to any fund, even the best performing funds, it beats them. So mm. that's, that's, you know, my plan. So I'm, I'm, I'm investing in either the FTSE 100, which is the UK version, but the mm. S&P 500 is um, a bit more secure. And how you do that... so. The reason, the reason why is because you, there's low funds. You can get uh, what are called index fund trackers. Mm. So uh, what, what that means is you can get one of these like online investment um, mm. apps on your phone. You open an account and you transfer money into there. And then you buy uh, a, 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 an S&P 500 um, index tracker. Mm. And... So that basically averages out your investment over the, the top 500 American uh, b businesses, basically. Mm. So that sort of averages out over the American economy. And okay, it goes up and down over over mm. decades. However, it generally goes up. Mm. So it's just like a stock market? That's that yeah, what you mean? Exactly. Mm. But I'm not trying to pick stocks. I don't pick stocks. Mm. I don't pick stocks. Uh, unless you you're doing it full time and even then it's just a i see it as a bit of a mugs game mm. it's, it's a bit controversial but yeah unless you really really know what you're talking about it's just chance mm. you know, it is worth it. Mm. okay and there's also some strategies for that right <laughs> how to do it yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> My, my investing strategy is invest in the S&P 500 and leave mm. it at that because I don't have the time or the inclination mm. to look into individual businesses mm. and I know that the S&P 500 will do better over mm. 40 years anyway. So mm. I'm not fussed. Okay. All right. So how to manage your business finances, especially uh, this is for the entrepreneurs out there. Mm. Okay. Mm. So... Um, so for me personally, I have mm. a business bank account and I have a personal bank account. So how that works is every month I pay myself a small salary from my business. Mm -hmm. um, and 
what that means is that money sort of stockpiles up in the business a little bit. So my business earns more money than me. Oh, um, <laughs> nice. <and laughs> yeah, every, every three months or so, what I do is I give myself a bonus. So I have my, I keep my monthly living expenses frugal and then I get my bonus and I can then go on holiday or something like that. Oh, that's nice. I should do that too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. So how about for the young professionals, how they should manage their finances? Mm, so mm. for the young professionals, it's the, the best thing you can. So this is, this is people who are employed. Yes. So employed. Mm -hmm. a lot of like mm. young office people. So a mistake that myself, when I was employed and other young professionals that mm. I did is that banks love giving us credit cards. True. Now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is so true. Yeah. Now credit cards are great. You know, they're good for building credit and mm. getting long loans. However, I know so many people who one month they spent twice what their monthly income was. So when they get paid, all their money goes to paying off their credit card. Mm. And then now they spend, they use their credit card for the next month. And then, so basically what that means is they always owe a month on mm. their credit card or more or worse. Yeah. So because that is a really dangerous game to get into, that means that you then can't afford, you know, if, if a better opportunity comes up, but with less money, Mm. You then can't take that and you're trapped. You're then, you're then stuck in the rat race. And mm. that is not fun. You know, yeah. you don't you take away your own options for that. Mm. So I think, I think credit cards are great, but use them very, very carefully. Mm. True. That also, is so true. Mm. This just occurred to me. Don't, I'm sorry, I'm just holding a peg randomly. <laughs> it's um, okay. <laughs> I, I always have something to fiddle with like a pen or something <laughs> um, so the the next advice i forgot mm. the next advice. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah don't don't underestimate the cost that it takes for you to commute to your job so even if mm. you've got a high paying job in the city i so i sort of live out in the countryside and my last job uh, mm. before I set up on my own, I had to travel into central Oxford and mm. that was costing me near enough 500 pounds a month. And I was earning, you know, that was more than a third of what I was earning, which mm. is ridiculous when you oh, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, traveling for jobs is, is great, but try and, I think it's important before you take a job to actually work out the costs of taking that job. So mm. if, you've, if you've got a local job and you're earning a thousand pounds a month, but then you have an opportunity to get another job for 1,500 pounds a month, but it costs you 400 pounds to get there and you need to travel for an extra two hours a day. Mm. For me, that's not worth it. Because mm. yeah. I'll be... Because I'll, I'll be a hundred pounds better off, but I'll lose two hours in a day. You know, that's not that's not living. Yeah, <laughs> and also uh, food. <laughs> oh my gosh, most people spend that so money on food. <laughs> yeah. They need to cut that out. Yeah, <laughs> or eating outside. Yeah, all that stuff. Food, food, food's an interesting one. So, um, I used to spend quite a lot of on money and uh, on food in my lunch breaks mm. and I didn't like that because I didn't value it however I know that some people who I worked with they really valued that mm. and they valued that over um buying clothes and mm. having family at home so if you value that then it's great but you've got to consider do you actually value it or are you just doing it because it's convenient and mm. There is, there is a case to say, actually, I really value convenience. In that case, it's fine. You know, eat, eat out oh. lunch, go get that mm. coffee. You really value it. If it adds stuff to your life, mm. then fine. But really think about whether it does add value to your life. 
Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, so also the same goes with, uh, so aside from food, yeah, uh, that's the one that you said, clothing, oh, clothes and other stuff. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. So it really boils down to, yeah, value the advantage. If you would much rather spend money on clothes than food, then make your own sandwiches at home. But then it means you can go buy that new jumper, mm. t coat, yeah. whatever it is. Mm. You know, it's, you've, got to, you've got to weigh up sort of um, what you really want to spend money on. And you want to realize what's essential to your happiness and spend mm. money on that unreservedly. You know, it's not, life's not all about saving. You mm. want to use this money to make your life better. So find things that you really value and spend money on those things. And if you're spending money on things that you don't value, stop spending on them. Mm. Nice. That is a excellent advice. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much, Garrett. I really learned a lot from this conversation. Awesome. And no yes. Yeah, so thank you so much. So guys, um, please follow Garrett on his social media accounts right down below. <laughs> so I'm going to put it on the description. And yeah, to know more about uh, managing your finances. It's really awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Garrett. I really appreciate your time to be with me today. And yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs> All yeah. right.